Richard Haas, President of the Council on Foreign Relations, we, do you believe at this stage we have dismantled Iran's nuclear program? No, what we have done is given ourselves a lot more warning time between where Iran is now and when we would find out they were developing a nuclear weapon if they chose to. But they're still keeping in place, and there's no way you can eliminate the foundations of a nuclear program, the expertise, some right. of the equipment. And again, the same point. After 10 years, they can do whatever they want is, with centrifuges, 15 is years it, with uranium. Right. So, but right now, though, <clears throat> is, the, is the deal worth it to you? It, the trade... It, would this have been the deal I would have negotiated? No. <clears throat> Once we negotiated it, I thought not to go ahead with it was a mistake. But this was an expensive deal. Yes, we got some short-term gain on the nuclear front, but we paid two enormous prices. We paid the price of Iran gaining access to resources, which will strengthen the regime and allow them to fund their adventurous regional right. policy. And we did not deal permanently with their nuclear but, challenge. But again, bottom lining it though, if you had to make, uh, if you had to have an up or down vote on this deal, it sounds like you would have voted for it. I would it. not have negotiated this deal. Once we negotiated this deal, then I would have supported this deal, but I would have negotiated a different deal. Isn't there another question though here? And the question would be, in an increasingly volatile region, in an increasingly violent world, in right. a dangerous world, do you want to allow Iran to continue to be part of an ongoing international criminal enterprise? Or do you want to try to slowly and hopefully effectively bring them into an alliance with civilized Well, that's what we were getting that's at. The, that's the question. Yeah. I mean, is, is that going to happen? Was their treatment of United States uh, sailors? Uh, did that suggest that they were moving in this direction? Was there, was, was there was shooting a, a rocket a thousand yards away from the USS Harry Truman a month or so ago? What, what did that show? Uh, the violations uh, already of, of, of other other treaties. I, listen, if as I keep going back to David Ignatius, this is a cosmic we'll gamble. Join us next if it pays off, then guess what? We all won like the Powerball lottery. If it doesn't pay off, it, it, I, I put this gamble akin to George W. Bush going into Iraq in 2003. Had he been able to spread democracy across the Middle East, the world would have looked radically different today. He failed and we're still paying for it and we will for the next 30 years. But Mike, you tell me, is this regime going to live by its word? Well, we don't know that yet, but, but what has happened over the last two or three weeks and especially over the weekend with the hesitation to put uh, the entire family on the plane, the, the plane sitting right. on the tarmac for 12 hours in Tehran, Tehran gets gets to the heart of the matter. Can this agreement, can continuing dialogue between the United States and Iran get Iran to the point where the Republican Guard faction is estranged from fairly civilized well, And it goes back to, really, this is, this is not a question, and, and you brought this up earlier, you're exactly right. This is not a question of whether Iran is going to be a, a good actor in international affairs as much as it is on what actor is going to end up winning that battle that's been going on for over a decade between the mullahs, between the guards, between people like Rouhani and the leaders, the, the reformers. It's not even just, this has been going on for 36 years. Right. This is the nature of the Iranian revolution. And this is then, a, it's a large bet. And the administration, and John Kerry will be on here later, is basically saying, they're going to say two things. The nuclear agreement makes sense on its own merits. And they're going to say, hopefully, this sets in motion a system that ultimately Iran will become so, more integrated in the region. The answer is we don't know. All I would say is I am just as prepared to argue this round as flat that this agreement will work against that because it, it provides resources in advance of Iran having fundamentally changed. In some ways, this agreement also strengthens the current state of affairs. So Joe read from the Wall Street Journal. I'll read from the New York Times because no one's really pushing back. He's, they say the deal is a testament to patient diplomacy and President Obama's visionary determination to pursue a negotiated solution to the nuclear threat despite relentless attempts by his political opponents to sabotage the initiative. I think there's different ways of looking at this. I also think when you're dealing with hostages, it's very hard to criticize the moment when there's like 10 levels of things going on at the same time. There are news organizations that did not report the news because they didn't want to get involved with, what, with the potential of these hostages coming home. So. I think it's tough to criticize in the moment. We will see how this deal does. Hostage deals are also tough to criticize. Look what Israel does. Israel has a history of essentially paying an awful lot, numerically, if you will, to get its people back. To me, 
I, I'm glad we got our people back. You can argue whether we've set a bad precedent. I think the larger policy debate, though, is about the agreement, mm -hmm. the release of resources, what are the odds, what Mike raised, of having Iran it. becoming a, a decent citizen of this part of the world. At best, the jury is 